Hello. Uh, well, following on from um, yesterday, it's now two days ago, was, uh, we chat in the back garden. Unfortunately, we're indoors again now, as predicted, because the weather has turned completely crap all of a sudden. So, anyway, I thought I'd um, head in very quickly into a subject that uh, I've been wanting to bring up for quite a while now, which is about the story of Job. I'm not going to do the whole story because it's just. It's just nonsense but um, I want to read portions of it because uh, when you read a lot of the the book of Job story it, it probably um, gives you more of a, an idea of <laughs> the way God views us or the God of the Bible views us than um, the many other books it, it's it's really quite telling so we'll just crack into it again I don't have a Bible so I'm reading this bit from the English Standard Version and we'll crack straight into Job 1 so there was a man in the land of Uz or Uz whose name was Job or Job and that man was blameless and upright uh, one who feared God and turned away from evil so there you go he's uh, he, he feared God and turned away away from evil and uh, there was born to him seven sons and three daughters so ten kids he possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and very many servants. So that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. So at this time, well, we don't know in, in relation to how, how important he was, but obviously he had uh, 10 kids, and he had an awful lot of servants, um, and he had a lot of animals, a lot of livestock, so apparently a bit of a wealthy man. And it, it cracks on to say um, he, he used to even, according to this, uh, when the days of their feast were on their course, Job would send and consecrate them and he would rise in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said it may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This Job did continue. So he, he even uh, offered up burnt offerings on behalf of his own children while he wasn't there, just to just to make atonement for maybe them saying something sinful against God. So that's how what I'm just thinking about is his own uh, mistakes and imperfections. He was also thinking about his children, always trying to keep on the right hand side of God. Or was it the left hand side of God? Well the right side of God I should say. So anyway, enter enter chief protagonist Satan. Yes, he, he makes a guest appearance here again. He, he's not really been in the story that much uh, as the Bible's gone apart from obviously the God, the, the, in the Garden of Eden. But he's back. He is back here at this point. So cracking onto this because this is really, really important. Uh, now there was a day. Oh, there you go. There was a day when the sons of God to, came to present themselves before the Lord. So I don't know what that, that how that God. How does that work then? There's, there's a day when the sons of God present themselves to the Lord. So we're up in heaven and there's one day that all the sons of God, how many million of them, present themselves to, uh, to, to the Lord. Bizarre. And Satan also came among them. Now hold on. So this is Satan the devil. This is the creature. This is one of the, the sons of, uh, one of the heavenly sons of God who already has been responsible for... <laughs> When beforehand there was perfection in the universe, Satan is the guy responsible for the downfall of man by, by what he did in the Garden of Eden. He is responsible that, that God has already given a prophecy in Genesis, which means that, that in time God would have to send his own son 4,000 years later um, um, to, to, to die, uh, to a horrible death, to, a, to appease um, himself to, to atone for um, the sacrifice that has to be made by perfect man. So this is Satan. Satan also that the man obviously by what what he's done he's, he's caused lots of chaos in heaven and also was, was chief culprit behind the angels coming down to the earth and for God uh, taking uh, on umbrage at the state of the world and then going and then then committing the greatest atrocity of uh, animal cruelty that will ever be known by destroying millions of creatures all over the earth. But luckily he found Noah, a good chap, and decided to keep Noah and a few select, selected animals in the ark to repopulate the earth. And the, the main person who is behind this is Satan. And yet here we have, here we have Satan. <laughs> 
just entering entering into heaven as you do as you do he's there the sons of god what why not satan now let, let's just think about this let's go back to the real world if you had a son who had been responsible for completely destroying the family and was particularly evil and a really bad influence wouldn't you by this time maybe um Barding coming from the house made me say, no, you're not coming anymore. You've already caused too much disruption. Look what you've done. Look, look what's happened here. Surely, if you were a mother or father, you'd say, no, no, sorry, I'm going to have to tell you that you can't come in the house. You're a really, really bad influence. Now, the interesting thing about this <laughs> here is, is if you've ever had the unfortunate um, experience of being in a judicial committee, uh, and you'll find out if the elders don't think that you're forgiven enough, they will want you to leave the congregation because, because obviously they feel you're unrepentant and you will be a bad influence on the rest of the congregation. <laughs> that they have, to, they have to throw them out of the congregation to show that they're trying to keep the congregation nice and clean. They don't, they don't you know, bad influence, spoils useful habits, all that thing. They've got to boot you out of the congregation to keep the congregation clean. But bizarrely, very strangely, here we have an example where Satan, who as we know has been responsible for in, what influenced Eve to eat the apple, Adam, sinfulness, the downfall of man, influenced the other angels uh, who came to the earth, destruction of the earth, felt sorry he made for it, destroyed all those animals. You know, uh, and, and, and is bizarrely still allowed to appear in heaven in front of God. So if you were in front of a judicial committee, you should just say to the elders, do you think, do you honestly think I'm as bad as Satan? They'll go, no, 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 not at all. Well, hold on a second. Why are you booting me out of the congregation when Satan here is allowed to freely um, associate with the, with the spiritual, with his spiritual brothers, if you know what I mean, in heaven. His heavenly brothers in heaven. Yes. Mm. I'd like to see the answer to that one. So anyway, so cracking on. So, where are we? Oh, of course, yes, yeah, Satan. The devil in heaven. So, of course, um, the Lord engages Satan in convo here. Now, you would have thought the Lord would have said, <laughs> God would have said, I'm not speaking to you ever again because you're an utter twat and I'm going to have to sacrifice my son because of you, you complete bastard. But no, that doesn't happen. Instead, Satan... Uh, the Lord says to Satan, as you do, it's, it's like a bar, it's like a bar, barroom chat, uh, chat here. Imagine both of them are on the bar have, have, having a beer. So, of course, um, and the Lord's going, um, have you considered my servant Job? That there is, um, oh, no, no, sorry, that, I'm, I'm, I'm zooming ahead here. Just go back to the even funnier bit. Is a, a verse before. So, of course, um, Satan comes in and the Lord says to Satan, as you do, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, just meet, like, it's just walked into the pub. Like, just walked into the pub here uh, and God's having a, a beer at the bar. And Satan walks in, Satan, yo. So he comes over and, and of course, um, God says to Satan, uh, from where, from where have you come? From, from where have you come? As you do, you know, when you haven't seen somebody for a long time, you go, what have you been up to? Come on, sit down here. Tell me what you've been up to. So, from where have you come? And, and now, now bear in mind, this is God. This is God asking Satan, from where have you come? This is the God who's here, he's there, he is everywhere. He doesn't miss a, a, a bird dropping from the heavens. And yet, bizarrely, <laughs> he says to Satan, where have you come from then? You know, you would have thought by now, you would have thought by now, at this point, God should have, would have <laughs> says, look, we've got to keep an eye on this guy, Satan. Look what he did in, in, in the Garden of Eden. Look what he did. And look how he influenced a lot of the heavenly creatures to go down to the earth and cause complete chaos that I felt, I felt regret and made it. I wanted to destroy the lot and just killed millions of animals. It was a bit hard, it's practically done. You would have thought at this point that God would have instructed a couple of angels to keep an eye on Satan. What, what, what's he up to? What's, what's, what's he been up to today? A report, a daily report of Satan. And today Satan, oh, oh no. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh dearie me. No. Oh, oh, oh goodness sake. Oh, come on. 
and then may, may have restricted, restricted his movements <laughs> somehow. So to stop the influence that he may have with imperfect humans on the earth, he, he may have restricted his movements in heaven and on earth. But no, bizarrely, Satan comes in and the Lord God just chats to him as you would as two, two blokes in a bar. And um, he obviously says to him, so Satan answers the Lord, and he asks a question, well, what, what have you been up to? And he, and he goes, um, I'll have a lager, I'll have a lager. Are you, are you, are you paying? Right, he's paying. The Lord's paying. It's, it's on God's tap, this one. So it's on tab yet, so he's drinking. He goes, um, um, from, from going to and fro on the earth, from going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it, as you do, as he's already done beforehand, as we know, and what trouble he caused that time. That's of course no 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 surprise here no surprise here for for the Lord God who who now goes all right that's what he's up to that that's where Satan's been he's he's been back to the earth so he so he's thinking to himself hold on a second if he's been back to the earth he might have spotted this chappy Job very wealthy man ten kids a lot of animals a lot of servants um, offering regular sacrifices and an all round good egg. So he goes to um, he goes to the Lord says to Satan, uh, "Have you considered my servant Job? That that there is none there's none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, who fears God and turns away from evil." So in other words, God is saying to Satan, if he didn't know it. Oh, by the way, there's a bloke on the earth who's the most upright man in the earth. He, he fears God, and and there you go. If Satan hadn't have noticed this. He's noticed it now. Oh my God! He's down there, right? I've got, I've, I've got to have a go at this guy. I've already Adam and Eve were easy, but now that God has told me all about this blameless guy that he's bumming on about on the earth, I think I've, I think I've got to do something down there. So of course, um, Satan very quickly thinks himself. He goes, um, he says. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, uh, do, Does Job fear God? For no reason? Ha have you not put up a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. So in other words, Satan obviously either knew or had a quick look down and went, right, yeah, Joe, know him. He's got a lot of stuff. Um, but he's saying to God, well, 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 no wonder he blesses you, because look at what you've given him. Look at the children you've blessed him with, and the, the, the big edge, and the big house, all the servants, and, and those tons of animals, and, you know, that, that's, that's the reason why he's, he praises you, because of everything you've given him. I tell you what, why don't you stretch out your hand, <coughs> and take everything back from him, and see what he does. Now, at this point, God could have said, Oh, hold on a second. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not rising. I'm not rising to that. I'm not rising, or I'm not taking the bait on this one. I'm not rising to the challenge. Let's leave Job where he is. He's a good man. He's a blameless man. There's nothing wrong. I, I'm not going to do anything detrimental to him, and neither should anybody else, because there's nothing wrong. He's a blameless man. He's a good man, and he's got where he has today. Um, purely off, you know, I haven't done anything myself, I you know, he's, he's done pretty well for himself and he's still re remembering to offer burnt offerings to me and he, he's all around good egg, he's, he's my most, most faithful son at the moment and I'm not going to rise to the, your challenge of trying to do something to him, I'm not going to do that, it's completely unfair and inappropriate and I'm not going to allow you to do anything to him either because, again, it, it's not fair. Um, and, and so, um, the Lord says to Satan, of course none of those things. The Lord doesn't say that to Satan at all, because Satan's challenged God. Oh my God, and I know you know what God's like. If you rise a challenge, you know, you can't do that, you can't walk away. You can't walk away, you can't, you know, otherwise you go, chicken, chicken. So anyway, what happens next is, uh, the Lord says to Satan, behold, behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now, let's just think about this. <laughs> hey, let's think about what has just happened. Right, okay. 
So basically, imagine you're a father or mother, which some of you may be watching this, and imagine you've, you've got two brothers. And one of the brothers is a bad influence, he's a bit of a twat. Uh, he's come to no good, he's always caused trouble all the time, he's a complete twat. Now the other brother, he's, 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 been a, he's done really well for himself, he's, he's worked really hard, he's, got to, he's, he's produced ten grandchildren for you as parents, and um, as grand, uh, grandfathers or grandmothers, and he's done really well for himself, he's, he's, you know, he's, he's worked really hard and um, he's got a lot of uh, servants or whatever it is, and he's got a lot of animals, and he's got a lovely house. And then all of a sudden, the twat of a brother who's, who's been a disrupted influence comes into you and says to you, uh, Mum, Dad, um, how's things? Yeah, it's alright. Uh, I've noticed um, Brother Job's doing very well for himself. Yes, he, he's done very well for himself. He has done very well for himself. Yeah, but, but no wonder. No, no wonder he's done very well. It's because you've given him everything. Why, 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 why don't you just take everything away from himself and, and still see if he rings you up? And uh, it's willing to uh, willing to send you a card and Mother and Father's Day saying happy happy Mother and Father's Day. You're the best parents in the world. Take everything from him and let's see if you, you still get a card from him on Mother's or Father's. Day. Let's see if that will happen. And of course, you being a loving father or mother would straight away go say, no, what are you on about? What are you on about? We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not going to you know take things from him or deliberately set things in motion that's going to absolutely crush him we're not doing that what you're suggesting here is that we take everything from him including our grandchildren we love our grandchildren all tell them so you're wanting us to do something to them no that's ridiculous but I tell you what if you can do them instead fair, fair deal to me sounds good to me so in other words God, God refused to do something himself, but then said to Satan, you go and do it. So you tell me, you tell me who was the worst. You, you tell me if you authorise your son to do something to your other son and to kill, be responsible for killing your grandchildren, who would be the worst? Hold on. Who would be the worst? Who would be the worst person for that? Now, it's, it's absolutely obvious who would be the worst. It's the father, because you're the person who's given that responsibility to your other son. You're the person who's going to say, yes, okay, do, go and do that. But what, for God's sake, whatever you do, don't kill him. Do everything else. Take everything else from him. The grandchildren, the house, the servants, the animals. Do everything else, but don't kill him. Because how is he going to learn a lesson... How are we still going to get that Father's and uh, Mother's Day card if he's dead? There, there will be no point proven at all. And so, that's what happened. Because, as we know, if you know your Book of Job story, very quickly, <laughs> extremely quickly, how Satan managed to massively influence what happened here. So, then it goes here, now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and uh, drinking wine in the, the oldest brother's house and there came a messenger to Job and said, uh, the oxen were ploughing and the donkeys, so the oxen were ploughing and the donkeys feeding beside them, as they do, coincidentally, and the Sabians fell upon them and took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword, I alone escaped to tell you. So one bloke survives the, the, the destruction of the donkeys and the oxen and the servants, and one bloke luckily, luckily, managed to survive and makes his way. <coughs> so while this guy's yet speaking, so while this guy's telling this awful story to Job, there's another bloke, there's another bloke comes in. And then came another and says, the fire of God, it's the fire of God, so what can you imagine, a ball of fire, a ball of fire, the fire of God, it wouldn't be lightning, the fire of God, so some sort of ball of fire, the fire of God fell from heaven, so seen from a distance, it fell from heaven, the fire of God fell from heaven and burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone will skip to tell you, so there you go, so in other words, this guy's out there and all of a sudden, oh my God, what's that up? And a great big fire from heaven, obviously from God, because it's only God who does these sorts of things. He burns up all the sheep, and we've lost some more servants again. So while he was yet telling the story about the fire of God burning up the sheep, um, there came another one. Another, another one came running in here. 
It says uh, the Chaldeans formed three groups and made a, a raid on the camels and took them and um, struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone the skip to tell you. So in other words, you know, Chaldeans in, camels taken, all the servants dead, and one bloke survives to tell the story. And he's in, just in front, uh, behind the other two chaps. So while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, and this is really a, a knife into the heart, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and behold, a great wind, so another supernatural disaster, a great wind came across the wilderness, struck the four corners of the house, it fell, it fell upon the young people, and they, they all dead, and of course, I'm the only one who skipped to tell you. So, as you can imagine, if you put yourself in Job's sandals, um, not shoes, sandals, if you put yourself in Job's sandals, you've just realised you have lost, um, all your livestock, you've lost all your servants apart from the one, two, three, four who survived, and you've just lost your ten children. And this all must have happened in the space of minutes. Minutes, well, depending on the distances, but you know, it all happened, bam, 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 all happened to that. So as you can imagine, if you're Job, you must be thinking, uh, hold on a second, this there's something not going. There's something not going on right. There's something not right at all. For all that to happen and so quickly, and it wasn't. There was a, a, a year in between. You know, it was just. You know, obviously somebody somewhere was out, out after him, especially the, the fireball from heaven. So it says, Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, fell on the ground, and worshipped. Oh, as you do, of course. It, it makes sense. Doesn't it? Imagine if you have just uh, found out that your house has just burnt down. Um, that all your animals uh, are gone and that uh, all your children are dead. Of course, the first thing you're going to do is go down, is shave, get, you know, shave your head, fall to the ground and, and, and worship uh, and start to worship God. It makes complete sense, doesn't it? So then he comes out with, Naked I came from my mother's room and naked shall I return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord! And in all of this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. Yes, of course, that makes complete and utter sense. He realises, he realises that this is some supernatural disaster affected him. He realises that somehow God is pick it, picking on him because it was, a, it was a ball from heaven. And yet all these things happen and his attitude is, well, the Lord give, the Lord taken away. You know, it's just, what, what do you do? And, and still he, he, he wouldn't um, curse God. It's all on curse God. He's still, he, even though he th he's probably thinking at this point that God is responsible, he just thinks, well, that that's God. He, he, he gives and he takes away. It's just bizarre. Ha has he got a mental illness? Because any normal person at that point would be completely and utterly devastated and crushed. Would never ever recover from this. And probably you would curse God. You don't say, God, why, why me? What did I do? You'd be thinking of all these things. It's just bizarre. But anyway, we're not finished there. No, we're not. So moving on. So, back to heaven. Meanwhile, back to heaven. So Satan, bugger, it hasn't worked out. He did what Satan, uh, that God allowed him to do, and yet he still refuses to curse God. Because <coughs> he's, he's got a mental illness, clearly. So anyway, so here we go. So again, again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came amongst them and presented them before the Lord. So yet again, this is another time when all the angelic creatures are there. God's there, whether it's, it's some, you know, whether it's some angelic bar or whether... We don't know what's going to happen again. And so the Lord said to Satan, again he's saying to Satan, this is Satan, this is the Lord, sees everything, hears everything, does everything, knows everything. He says the same thing to Satan. And from where have you come? You know... What is going wrong with you, God? Why don't you know what Satan has done? Did you not watch Satan just do what he did? Did you not see what he did? Did you not just witness how he did exactly what you gave him the permission to do, what is to, is to destroy this man's life and to needlessly kill a load of servants, a load of animals and ten innocent children? Well, they might be an older child, but they, they, you, you get the drift. So he was saying, oh, what, what, what have you been up to Satan? And Satan to Lord and said, uh, the, the, the same, the old chestnut, well, from going to, and fro on the earth, and, and from walking up and down upon it, you know, just, just shooting the breeze down on the earth, 
visiting the mountains, down on the beach, in the forest, and um, just killing a load of servants, animals, and uh, somebody's children, and ruining their life. Oh, but you allowed me, you said it was okay to do that, so, hey. So anyway, uh, the Lord said to Satan, uh, have you considered, what's going on here? Is he, is he, is he, is he gone senile? Have you considered my servant Job? That there's none like him on the earth. We've done this one before. A blameless and an upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. So here's the change. He still holds fast his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without reason. So in other words, yes, Satan incited God to destroy him without reason. And of course, he still holds fast his integrity. Um, uh, despite what's happened. So he, maybe it's alluding to the fact that maybe God knows exactly what Satan's done because God said you can do what you like. So of course Satan's a bit annoyed at this one thinking ah he's still holding the integrity even though I've literally destroyed the man's life. And so then Satan said to the Lord says uh, aha this will really hurt him. You know think about this he's just lost everything he's lost his children you're not going to really be honestly bothered about your physical condition at this point. Honestly you, you, that's the last thing you're going to worry about if you've got boils. Honestly, think about it. Oh, I've lost my house, my children, my servants, but oh, fucking cracking balls on the home. Let's think about it. But anyway, Satan says, uh, skin for skin, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. So again, he's inciting God to do something personally. You know, if it's not bad enough what's happened to Job already, he wants him to go out and, 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 and uh, afflict him with some sort of disease or something not very nice. In fact, he's, imagine, you know, it probably he won't even feel the pain of his body because the pain he must be feeling in his heart and in his head. But think about it. So, of course, um, so basically the Lord, as usual, God says, well, I'm not doing that. But I'll tell you what, he says, behold, he's in your hand, only spare his life. So yet again, God is just saying to Satan, off you go, do what you like, but whatever you do, don't, 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 you know, don't kill him, because we, we won't be able to learn anything from this story. You know, if you kill him, it, you know, we, 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 we will, then we'll be debating this for thousands of years, you know, did he, in his dying breath, or whatever. So anyway, um... So Satan went out with the full blessing of God. Just, you know, just go on, you, you do it, I'm not doing it, but you, off you go. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and he struck Job with loathsome sores from the sole of his foot to the crown in his head. So he must have looked like um, a slipper man out the, the Lamb Lies Down on Broadway album, you know, covered in like VD huge grotesque boils. It must have looked bloody horrible. You know, and, and, and it must have been awful. So anyway, so Satan went out he, and he stood him with all these souls. Uh, and he took, and it says he took a piece of broken pottery. Obviously, obviously, joke, not Satan. He took a piece of broken pottery with which to scrape himself while he sat in the ashes. So here we go. He's now in the ashes. And he's, he's scraping it, boils that he's got with, with a broken pot. You know, if, if things weren't bad enough, they were pretty awful now. But I'm pretty sure, to be honest with you, this was the least of his worries. And then, of course, we have the story, and this really, really, really goes on forever and ever. Amen. Is we get this ridiculous bit where we get these, you know, we get these three friends of Job's come out to hear what's happened, um, and they, they want to help him because, of course, his wife says to him, "Do you still hold fast your integrity? Curse God and die." But he said to her, "You speak as one of the foolish women would speak. Shall we receive good from God, and shall we not receive evil?" In all of this, Job did not seal his lips. So, in other words, this is it. Job was under no illusion that he had been blessed from God, but he was under no illusion that he'd also been cursed by God. But still, he wouldn't utter those words. And his wife's saying, "It's obvious to everybody. You've been cursed by God. Everybody knows this." So curse him and just have enough, enough and die. But he refused to do that because he was, he was an all round good egg or mentally ill. We don't really know. So of course his, his three chums come up to, as we know, um, help him. And uh, it, 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 well obviously they don't, they just sit down with him and they sort of, sort of to mourn with him. You know, maybe he scratches boils with a, maybe they've all brought their own pot and I'll do his head and you do his arsehole and I don't know. 
I'm not touching his balls. Oh, folly, they're not balls, they're his bollocks. So anyway, that's, that's what happened here. So anyway, basically Job just then goes on to just, it laments his birth. He goes on, let the day perish in which I was born, the night that I was conceived, let it be darkness, blah, 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 blah. He just feels sorry for himself. Who wouldn't feel sorry for yourself? Who wouldn't curse the day you were born if all those atrocities had been, you know, forced on you by God? Well, actually it was God, because he said to Satan, you go and do it. So God's permission, God willing, off he goes it. So anyway, that was Job, he was going on about that. So eventually, we know that uh, Job's three chums tried to give him, uh, tell him, you must have done something wrong. You really, 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 you must, have, you, you must have done something. What did you do? Come on, Job, what did you do? So eventually, um, these three guys each take in turn to have a go with them. Then Job has a go back at them. And he goes on to this sort of lo long, poetic things. Of course, you know, the last thing you, you can imagine you do if you've just been completely destroyed mentally and physically is that you want to come out with some wonderful poetry praising God. But apparently, this is what Job does. It's incredible! What a guy! So anyway, we'll, we'll go on to this. This is obviously this Elihu guy turns up. So the three, these three men cease to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. He was self-righteous, self-righteous Job, you naughty boy. So then Elihu, the son of um, this bloke, he burned with he burned with anger at Job because he justified himself rather than the God. Oh my God! Sorry, Elihu, if you just lost. All your family and all of your possessions, I'm sure that you had a justification for trying to justify that you hadn't done anything and still managed to praise God. But apparently, Elihu gets stuck into Job, he gets stuck into the three friends, and, and lets, he lets them have rip. What a pal! What a guy! So eventually, after Elihu gets stuck in, guess who appears? Yes, it's God. He appears in out the whirlwind and then starts to say to Job, hold on a second, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? I made this, foundations of the earth. Who did this? Who did that? Who did the stars? Who did this constellation? Who did this? Who made this build for I am God. Have you forgot what a great guy I am? I'm the guy who made everything. Of course, I took everything away because that's what I'm like. Because, you know, we're hey. But I am God. That's why I've done all of these things. You know, that's it. Have you forgotten? Remember your place, Job. Remember who you are. I think at this point, scratching his boils, right, and his bollocks, you know, covered in dust, and you know, not been probably, he probably had all balls on his throat so he couldn't eat, he was probably losing weight. Oh my god, what a terrible His wife and nagged him, his three friends that just weren't friendly at all. This young guy comes along and tells them, you know, why are you so self righteous? He's lost everything, and then God comes in and then reminds him. What, how great he is, how great God is, I've done this, I've done that, blah, 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 I've done this, you know, the whole thing, the whole shit, that's a, you know, it's, it's the last thing you really, really need if you joke. So anyway, we spend a lot of time in God sort of being really, really self-righteous, saying, oh, look at my great achievements, what a great guy I am. So eventually, after hearing all, all this, after lie like you, you know, going on him, and now God going on him, and now eventually Job goes, oh, he just realises he realises that maybe he, he's not viewed this whole episode in the right way. And so he, 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 does, he, conf he confesses and repents to God. What has Job got to repent to? God should be bowing down to Job and say, Look, I'm really sorry that I allowed um, one of my sons to do this to you. I, 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 why did I do this? I, 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 sh I really failed as a loving father. And as a God of love, I've so failed at this point. I should never allow this to happen to you because you're a blameless man and you're a good man. I should never, ever allow this happen to you. And, and can I come down now? Uh, and, and you've not cursed me once. Can I come down to you now uh, and beg your forgiveness? Can I beg your forgiveness? But instead, Job has to now beg forgiveness to God for taking the wrong viewpoint after God and Elihu told him, oh, by the way, you know, God is great. He's a great guy. He's done all these things. It's just bizarre. So anyway, um, eventually the, the Lord rebukes um, Job's friends as well. So they get it as well. He tells, he, he, he tells Job, I want you to offer up some burnt offerings for, for, for their sins, for the things that they said. And uh, eventually, Job had to pray on their behalf, you know, we forgive me, forgive me three, three friends as well, so as to do that as well. So then we crack on. So eventually, um, after all of this, eventually the Lord being, he's a great Lord, he's a great God, well done. So eventually he rewards Job doubly, as we know, because it says, And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job, 
when he had prayed for his friends, his bad friends with the bad advice. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came to him all his brothers and sisters, all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil, the, all for all the evil that the Lord had brought him. So there we go again. For all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. So there's no doubt here. There's no, there's no grey area here. It's quite clear that the, they still thought that the Lord, God, had been responsible for what had happened to Job. And he was, because he said to his one of his seven sons, you go and do it. You have my permission to do it, but I'm not doing it. So ultimately, he is responsible. Job was under, under no illusion that this, is, this was from God. And even after this all, you know, even the Bible says, it, that, you know, that, that God was responsible. And then he says, and each of them gave him a piece of money and a ring of gold. So obviously, that sort of, you know, it allowed him then at that point to then go out. It's funny, where were they beforehand? Yeah, where were they beforehand, you know? I think it was obvious that the guy had been cursed. But, you know, where, where, where were they then? Why didn't they give money and gold then to go and buy some sheep and some donkeys and camels? So he may feel a bit better about losing his, his uh, ten children and, of course, all his servants, bar four of them. So, of course... The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. Oh, well done him. So he had 14,000 sheep, which is twice as many, 6,000 camels, uh, twice as many, 1,000 yoke of oak, twice as many, 1,000 female donkeys, twice as many. He also had seven sons and three daughters, which it isn't twice as many. That's exactly the same. And um, well, that was it. That was, that was the story of Job. So, um, so what do we learn? What do we learn from that wonderful story of Job? Well, it's quite simple. It's quite simple. That uh, in essence, that this gives us an idea of where we are with God, where we are with God. Because, for instance, at the point that Job failed to curse God and still kept his integrity, even though everything had been taken away from him, at that point he should have said to Satan, Right, Satan, the game is up, the jig is up. There's no more testing of humankind at all. You, you, knew, you went in there, did with Adam and Eve, and they were perfect, and they, they fell at the first hurdle, but here is Job. You've asked him to go at every single hurdle and he's right at the end of the race and he's still kept his integrity. He's still there. And he feels I'm responsible but he still hasn't cursed me. You know, a bit self-righteous at times but he still hasn't cursed me. So the jig's up Satan. Uh, we've tested somebody to, to, the, to the, the, his near-death situation so now there's no point in you doing this anymore. You can't incite me to do this anymore. I'm now going to kill you banish you or whatever because I don't want to see any more suffering on this earth. Of course that never happened because God's not like that. Bizarrely Satan was allowed to then continue doing roaming the earth, walking the beaches and just you know ruining it for everybody else for you know many more years and still today funny enough because now he's He's, <laughs> now he can no longer, of course, you know, go in for, you know, appear in front of God after that war in heaven. And now he's down here full time. Well, he was already down here full time. Uh, anyway, he just made guest appearances in, in the heavenly bar, you know, having a drink with, with, with God, saying, well, what's the crap? What have you been up to? You've been down on the earth. So he's always been down here. And yet God there at that point should have said, right, the jig's up, Satan. You've, you know, we, we've gone all the way with this one and you've been proved wrong. So I think that settles the universal issue as if man will still worship me despite me, despite him thinking I've took everything from him. But it never happened. So it just shows where we are. It just shows that this thing that people, we, we know, we, we refer to God as the God of love, not true. We refer to God as being our Heavenly Father, not true. Because a father and a God of love would not have allowed another son to do that to another son. He wouldn't have allowed that to happen to just prove a point. He wouldn't have done it. You wouldn't do it and I wouldn't do that to prove a point for, for one of our sons to another son. We wouldn't allow the destruction of our grandchildren and all the guys house just to prove the point that I still wanted to receive a card on Mother's and Father's Day that he still never, you know, even though he knew he was responsible, that he would still send us a card. You are the best dad in the world even though you've taken everything from me and I know it was you. So, you know, that's all I can say. It's just another example, as I've said before, and I keep on reiterating this, is that people come out to Jehovah's Witnesses still are trying to get a relationship with God. They're still trying to find the God of the Bible. They still want to worship this God of the Bible. And honestly, you know, we take off the... 
take off the Jehovah glasses, the Jesus glasses, you've already obviously removed the Jehovah's Witnesses glasses, take all the glasses and read the Bible for what it really is. Look at different things that happen in the Bible and instead of having this preconception of, well, God, he's a God of love and he's a just God, he's a righteous God, he's a loving God and all those things, remove that completely and now just look at it as you would from a human standpoint. It was written by humans and involves humans and involves things that happen with humans and read that and think, would I do that? Would I do that? How would I react to that? And you would then say, well, if I wouldn't do that, if I wouldn't um, allow that to happen, if I wouldn't authorise the destruction of my own grandchildren by another son, if I wouldn't have seen this guy desolate and crushed, you know, and then make it worse by giving him a horrible disease, why would God do that? And there's no explanation to that. There's no explanation to that at all. So in other words, it's quite simple. I said this before and I've said this again. Please stop looking or stop worshipping or stop trying to make a connection with this God of the Bible. Because honestly, when you start to look at the, the things that happen in the Bible, <laughs> he's awful. He is honestly a bit of a twat. I have no problem saying this at all. The, the, the God of the Bible is a bit of a twat. He makes Greek gods look saintly by the things that God does. Honestly, so stop trying to get <laughs> stop trying to get a relationship with him. Just forget it. Just decide I'm here, I'm gonna look after myself, my family, my friends, and make the most of the life you've got. Because everything the Bible tells us. <laughs> that he doesn't really care. Yeah, honestly, he doesn't really care. He isn't a God of love and he isn't a Heavenly Father and I, I have a great doubt that he may even exist. Well, that's another story which I'll do on uh, another tape. But anyway, I'll leave that to you because a lot of people do say to me, uh, as in the videos I put up, saying, oh, well, don't, don't let what's happened with Jehovah's Witnesses puff, put you off your relationship with God. Don't let it puff. Honestly, I'm not letting that. This has been, uh, you know, the, the fact that this has been eye-opening, the fact that I was able to reject an organisation who allegedly spoke from God, then look at God's word, the thing that they get, uh, allegedly get their authority from, then look at the stories without having these sort of fake glasses on that I'm able to finally have my eyes open and, and realise the real truth, <laughs> the, 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 the real truth of God. Basically the Bible is, is the truth of man trying to understand a relationship with a higher being and you understand that this higher being really, really doesn't care, honestly. Anyway, I can't say that enough because I've said it about 25 times anyway. But that is, that is my take on the Job story. Uh, I'd be interested for your comments and uh, I now need a drink because I've had a bit of a cold and I've got a bit of a sore throat anyway. So anyway, I'll probably get killed now going the road. Probably a big, a big heavily ball of thing will come down as I'm driving up the motorway to Glasgow to rehearsal and balance. And I'll teach that bastard. So anyway, there you go. But there you go. I've, I, the, the, you know, there you go. God, you know, if you do exist, you know, you, you tell me I'm wrong. And still, 17 years later, it hasn't happened. So anyway, and it isn't going to happen because I don't think he exists. Anyway, bye bye.